So, and this time we're going to start animating the pike. Um, as you may have noticed, um, I've changed the skeleton a bit. So, um, for example, the fins have their nodes now on the first on the first ray of each fin, um, because I've I've watched some videos of pikes, and when they um, move their fins, the first ray always more or less stays in place, and only the back of the fin is wobbling around. And also, I've um, improved the constraints on the head a bit, so now if you open the draw, um, the snout also moves up and that's how how they do it actually. So we're good to start animating. Um, so first thing that you want to do is to split your window and for that right click the header and split area and then turn this one into an action editor. And now you add a new action down here, add new and name it. And the first thing that we're going to do is an idle animation. So we name it Red water idle. So, um, first, first of all, before we can animate, um, we have to pose it. So, let's give it a quick and short pose. Pikes tend to curl their backs a bit when they when they um, when they rest, so kind of like this, and we can also give it a bit of curl from the top, so it's not looking um, so stiff. So also give it a bit of curl like this. And now you can see it has a nice little bend. And now also the fins are often alternating, and so we move them a bit somewhere. In opposite positions more or less and now this one moves most of all fins so we move this one the most and this one just a little bit and now same here in the other direction and here also in the other no no in the same direction so now we've got a nice pose that we can use to start with um, I'm going to turn on the names because it, it is annoying and also the axis now you can see it clearly and that's pretty good looking so oh, we can turn turn the fins a bit so the more you put into a, into your default pose um, the more nicer it looks mm, those should rotate a bit okay so now it's good and now we make sure that we're 
on train 1. You can see this here and here and here. So, and now um, we add a keyframe for every um, node that we have. And for this, uh, we add and uh, we press I, and this, uh, this brings us to the insert key menu, and we add a location and rotation keyframe. So now all those bones were highlighted blue, and here those um, um, there was an action channel created for each each bone. So this is our first frame. Now we move up, let's say 10 frames using the up arrow and now we change. Or no, we, we move up a bit more um, until the end of our animation. Let's say our animation uh, should be well mm, four seconds long. Then we go to frame hundred and add a add the same keyframe again. As we didn't change it, you can simply uh, press I lock rod again, and now you can see. Um, between those keyframes that we have, there is yellow here, that means uh, no change of the value, and there's no animation. And now we can change this. So let's go to frame 11, and take First of all, we're going to deal with the fins. So we are going to take all of them. And now this is important. We use this button to copy their pose into the buffer. And now we have two options. We can pass the pose as it is, this won't do anything, or we can uh, pass the pose mirrored, so the pose is mirrored and um, appears mirrored on the x-axis. So let's try that. Now you can see a change. And now we insert a key again. And you see here for the fin nodes, um, the uh, the yellow turned into blue, and you can also see their move. And that's what we want to achieve. So, um. First of all, we got to turn this into. Ah, well, first, some general settings we got to do. Um, turn on nearest frame snap. So, whenever you move keyframes, you lock them to an, um, a true frame number, not somewhere in between. Where it becomes hard to find them later on. And then something that's also pretty useful, um, let's turn to the um, to the timeline timeline editor for a sec. And here go to this record button and click it, turn it on, and select add replace keys. And this allows us to skip um, this uh, pressing I lock rod 
every time when we change the pose. So um, go back to action editor and now if you post something you've got to beware of it because now if you for example do something like this you see it automatically created the keyframe so don't randomly post anything only post something if you if you know it works and if not um, cancel it so um, now we've got this keyframe in here but we don't want it and so we've got to delete it so we deselect all and only select this one and press delete yes erase, uh, erase it and it's gone so now we can have a closer look at our fins and Well, the speed they're currently flapping is not right. Here, this this is too fast, so let's move it, bring it to 21. It could be all right, so let's duplicate this and this. Um, or yeah, we could try. So now we duplicate each of those keys so we get it to repeat and you can see we've got this alternating stuff here and now there's, there's a problem. Um, so here's it on this side. Um, well, it's a bit weird, so let's just okay. So you can remove um, one row keyframes using K for column bit strange because it should be C but it's K so now this column is selected and you can delete it and now it doesn't behave that strangely anymore so well we can Either we keep this or not. I'm not sure if I like it, but you've got to look at your animations several times before you can tell if it's good or not. So this one, for example, this and that fin, they're really nice. They're almost just the way it should be. But the back fin is not so nice, so we've got to change that around. So so you see, this is the mirror of this. And now we can add some keys in between to make it work better. Yeah, that's nice. So we take it and mirror it and past it and mirror it. And now you see this almost looks like a real wobbling fin up here 
and we can simply keep the lower fin. I think that's pretty good. Um, now we've got to deal with the belly fins and stuff. So they also have this kind of alternating alternating movement and they are here so it moves to the front like this and then it moves upwards like this uh, that seems okay yeah We can try this. And now we've got to be careful where to place the second key. Oh, for for the time being, I'm just gonna remove all of this because it's simply a repeat. And it, the more phases you have, or the more repeats of each cycle, the more the harder it gets to control and to maintain. So only extend it in the end. This goes down. So this one should go mirrored here. And this one should go mirrored there. And now we can check if it looks good. Well, it's not too bad. Yeah, I think we can keep that. Might be a bit, a bit too much, actually. But we can change that later on. Yeah, it's too much. Change it right now. Um, So So now mirror it again and back. Yeah, now it's acceptable. Yeah, okay. And now same procedure here up front. And these should this one goes up and this one goes down. Good. Or maybe it's too much. Oh no. Well, now it's good. Okay, so I'll go here. And take this and go there, past it mirrored, and now select this one, past it mirrored here. And now we've got our fins alternating nicely. Oh, and now we can take all of this and put it to extend, um, to a cyclic 
extrapolation. So when we go past the last frame, we see the animation looped. And to do so, click on select all keys and all channels. So, so go over the channels and press A, and over the keys and press A. And now key, extend mode, cyclic. And now um, you see it's looped. And that's probably already too strong for an idle animation and could more or less be used for the swimming animation, I think. Okay, so let's do the swimming now. Probably better. So, the fins are all right. So now we can add some movement to the spine. And to do so, we can simply go somewhere, maybe here, after the first phase of the of the, the fins. And now we uh, doesn't want to do. Why doesn't it want to work? Oh, okay. Um, problem with the cyclic extrapolation. We've got to add a keyframe here first, and now we can work with this. Um, now delete those keys in this one, and now we can work. Okay, so make it a bit more straight up here if we're working for uh, for swim animation. And so go like this, more or less. And you can see it's straight. And now Got. We can remove those keys because they prevent it from extrapolating. And now we could use that, keep it like this, but the bending of the spine is too strong. So we've got to reduce it here a bit too. Oh well, we can, yeah. Let's reduce it here. So make it really slight and barely visible at all. Now copy and paste and again remove these. So, and that looks pretty good for the swimming animation. Well, we can give the head some movement. So, because at the moment it's pinned, uh, we don't want this. Mm, we're gonna make it move down a bit. Uh, up. So, yeah, that's nice. So now we've got the swimming animation. All we need now is some global movement. So make it move forward. And for this, we we've already got our keyframe at the first frame. Now we go to the last frame of our animation and take the bib zero one node move it forward. 
and now we've got to test okay uh, problem bip01 has to get a cyclic extrapolation and not just cyclic extend so here we select um, cyclic extrapolation and now you can see it is looped and moves forward and does so continuously and now I think the speed is all right I'm gonna hide the notes so it's better to see and well here we have our animation more or less ready of course you can keep refining these like forever for example I think the fin movement of the back fin is still too strong and I'm gonna um, make it less obvious but this is the basic workflow that you you use for creating animations and in the next tutorial um, I'll show you how to get it in into the game um, from this state on so baking the constraints exporting and well see you next time